Welcome back to another uh, discussion about uh, the Rings of Prime. Uh, gentlemen, I have a confession. I didn't watch both these episodes. What? I watched 30 minutes of the third episode, and I said, yeah. I can't do this anymore. So, but I did. I, I watch all kinds of videos, like, giving me the... Just pooping on the, it. Uh, yeah. So I know, I know what happens. So mm. I just want to hear your guys' take, because I know I don't like it. Mm. And... Those thirty minutes, I can tell you why I, I stopped. Yeah, and it was I'm just curious what the moment was. What was the what was the breaking? It was definitely time? a moment that like broke me for sure. So yeah, I'm curious it, to hear. Wow. It's just like our main protagonist that we're supposed to uh, apparently follow this whole time. She is so insufferable, and it makes me just angry to follow this character because, like, the things she says and the things she does, she's always got a scowl on her face except when she's riding that horse, and then it's just a goofy fucking grin. And it's she's still a scary. horse girl, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I just she's such a bad protagonist, and like make her likable, and yeah. you know, and I know from these what I've heard. Like I said, I didn't watch all of them, but she's still insufferable as far as I know to the to the end of this sec like these two episodes, right? I mean, there's no character arc happening. She's just constantly angry, mm -hmm. and if I see that fucking knife one more time, just. <laughs> Like, when it was on that guy's belt, it was just, like, knife. It's like, okay, we get it, man. Why do you need that knife, you know? Anyway, I know why she No, did. there was, like, the moment, um, because, like, there was, I was, like, really happy happy to see Numenor, you know, because, like, just, mm -hmm. like, in the main books and stuff, like, there's a lot of, uh, it alludes a lot to, like, Numenor and how it's, like, the this beacon of, like, elf and man and a progress after the first war against Morgoth. And so I was cool, and I was wondering, like, why the fuck we got it in the third episode, and we just now are getting Elendil and Isildur in the third? It's like, why would you not put those guys, like, right off the bat with, like, Ladriel, Elrond, and then the, the man storyline? You know, mm -hmm. drop, drop, like, the the elf and and woman lover story. I feel like the Southland storyline is, like, it's fine. It, it's it's stupid. It's like not serving any purpose. Like it's that yeah. It's and, like in the Harfoots were so they're so <clears throat> boring to watch. Like nothing happens with those Harfoots, except yeah, for and they're like not existent. Boy broke his ankle what two episodes ago? Mm -hmm. I think I don't know. It felt like an eternity watching just this thirty minutes today, or yesterday. But yeah, yeah. I when speaking of Numenor and bad writing, uh, when they're driving in and he's like, "Where are we?" and she's like, "Well, it can only be one place." It's like. What are you talking about? That pissed me off. So, dude, and she's like explain, explaining elf racism to the dude who like served yeah. on Morgoths, yeah. like you know, like fought for Morgoth. Like, Stupid. and like you—that's like that's what loses. Like when when you like saddle a character with like, I don't know, explaining lore, like just expo mm -hmm. dumping. Yeah. And then there's no care. Yeah, you're like there's no there's no development of character. It's like no, you're, you're taking you're taking the character out of that person by like having them. Dump, especially when there's a scene right after that of them like going to a library that's like the yeah. history of Numenor so that like, nobody decided to check out and yeah. link together. So like, to... It's like this is this if you're trying to like explain stuff, this is the place and time to do hey, it. Like <laughs> and Elrond wasn't his dad that they said built the fucking place. It was or his, some uh, shit like that. His brother was like the yeah. first king of Numenor. And you're telling and, me this yeah. whole time she's hunting Sauron with that symbol flashing it everywhere when basically yeah. pierced into her eyes. You know everybody knows about the fucking symbol. But no, they couldn't right. tell on the map. Come and on. they're still like Nobody. this. Belief, and it's like, yeah. Just, oh, I must be blind. That. Well, you must be fucking blind, bitch. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, Jesus. You that know? moment, Those moments really bothered me. Because I was like, oh, man, we got like this great place. And honestly, I think like the it looks fantastic. Like Numenor. It's like this bustle. Mm -hmm. It's like, like it's supposed to be this beacon. This bustling metropolis and whatnot. Um, but it's like, like the set dressing is fine. But it's like if the characters aren't interesting, why? Like I don't care to be here with yeah. them like you know like nothing is happening and they kind of make a joke out of uh Alendio and Isildur and that writing is I found that writing to be a, a pretty atrocious like the, the family conversation between Alendio and Isildur and his daughter it's not great I think it, isn't that daughter just fabricated yeah because he's supposed he to have exist. another brother yeah. yeah so I think they just threw a daughter in yeah 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 yeah, I just I don't know. There's like, and I'm sure I'm being picky too, because like I said, like you know, I'm like in for like the lore, and I want the deep cuts. Yeah. But it feels so name droppy when like Elrond is like bouncing between Celebrimbor and Durin, 
like, it's mithril man we got mithril now yeah right yeah, i don't know hmm. that was one of my it favorite really, moments it, it was one of the better moments i'll say because i was like i was like oh cool like at least we know where it's coming from but i was like it was just it just felt a little heavy-handed you know i was just like oh, come on like, hmm. maybe maybe like have Durin like give a weapon like one of the magical weapons or something an artifact that we see down the line or you know well, that's what mithril is mithril is like this mystical mm -hmm. armor chain mail right yeah the, uh, magic metal i guess metal. i should just hop in to say i took a little bit of the high road on this watch through i mean i started with cynicism and it it faded through through the episode i'm sure if i wanted to hold it i could have held it i like mm -hmm. i just kind of let it i mean i maybe i just like give things too much credit because they made it and i just like wow you fucking did it at least like that's a, some sort of feat mm -hmm. i don't well, think I they should have made this show in general yeah. but i'm not i mean they made it so i'm gonna try to like service yeah. it in my on my end too. too but like it's it's way it's not as interesting as i think it is 100 mm -hmm. it's not a great show it's not a, it's not a terrible show though not a terrible show. yeah i, I will say that I, I can see like who will like this who like will watch this and who finds it interesting because on a certain level i do still i'm like i'm watching it because like, i just want more of middle earth and more you know mystic mystical magical fantasy realm stuff mm -hmm. um it, it's but, just but, like yeah, little things where they're just trying to keep your like i guess hope alive by saying things like when uh the elf you know gets his throat cut and then he's like i will chop it down it's like oh okay frodo you know i'll take it <laughs> It, and yeah. when Galadriel, I think there was a scene, again, I've, I've watched a lot of, like, I guess the cliff notes on these episodes, but I'm pretty sure there's a scene where she says, like, oh, the shows you stuff that hasn't happened or whatever, just basically an oh, yeah. interpretation of what Galadriel said in the movies. So it's just these little Palantir. things that they sprinkle in there. That the Palantir? Is that what you're talking fans, about? Fans. Huh? When she, like, when she touches the Palantir? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. 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 So, so you're saying, says like. that she says to Frodo, but it's just, like. She, they shoehorn that in there because people who watch the movies and are fans of the movies they're like oh mm -hmm. people will like this this will keep them yeah, engaged to yeah. the story that we're just fucking butchering but yeah I, I see that side I also see like, I don't know I like after watching this third episode I just like went into like I don't know like writer's room mode I was like damn mm -hmm. like how because like I got like I think they have a lot of good pieces and like they're you know they're they're sprinkling in all those things that you liked and wanted to see more of from the first trilogy or the main trilogy. Mm. And uh, they just have them like so jumbled up. Like, like I was in good graces in the first two episodes. Cause I was like, I was like, you know, honestly, like a whole lot doesn't happen, but they're setting up characters and like, you're kind of getting to know like who these people are and where they're mm. going, like where they're starting from. So I was like ready for more and like to see more, but then, then yeah, after that third episode and, uh, I mean, it feels so, very scattered, uh, like because mm -hmm. all the characters are scattered. Yeah. And I mean, I would like to see the map again and more. I think like yeah, it, it's hard too. to understand where you are for audience members, like or just like where like where the goal. I don't even like I understand like that the it's an island city or whatever, but where you know, like it's like far it's supposed to be far west, right? Like, off, yeah. So it feels scattered. I mean, compared to like. The Lord of the Rings, where there's a bunch of cultures uniting for one common goal, literally to push together for stuff, mm -hmm. like, and then they scatter. Like, I assume maybe that that's what they're building towards is like some type of uniting of man, dwarf, and I mean, because I don't really know yeah. the lore, but Sauron is coming. They're gonna destroy him. Isildur is gonna take the ring. That's still to come, correct? Like, yeah, that yeah. well, yeah, I get. I don't that's know. why they're building the forge to build the rings of power, right? And then Sauron, which I. You know, I, I don't know how true this is, but the people I've listened to, they're like, oh, this the guy who wants to forge real bad in um, Numenor, he's yeah. going to be Sauron. So, like, mm. Interesting. I don't know. Because yeah, he know really they... wants to forge, and he got that look in his eye, you know, and he's, you know, he's got, got that, that line of, like, clearly, uh, but... Sauron went by many names. You know? Right, and right. So it's like, yeah, they're trying to feed you that, I think. But um, I don't want to spoil too much, but if you guys... I don't know. I feel like it, it might just be good to say it, and this might be a little long-winded, but I'm going to read some of the notes here that I made, if you don't Please. mind. All right. So I, I did a little research on Tolkien and, like, his writing, and, like, uh, I found out, and it makes, like, a lot more sense looking at the trilogy, the main trilogy, that, like, a lot of his writing, his main writing started in, like, the 1930s, mid-1930s, like, 36, 35. 
and went into and so it's all the build up and lead into the world war ii right so yeah. it's like all like the nazism the nazi party and everything that leads up to world war ii oppression by mm-hmm. darkness mm-hmm. light and dark all that thing so it's like a lot of the writing of lord of the rings mirrors like the geopolitical right of mindset europe, right? of europe yep exactly yeah. um and so i think that's what they're trying to do like with the um the elf and the orc camp it's supposed to be like you know the nazi camp the whatever that kind of thing and um hmm. and then like the war like this is supposed to be the second war for middle earth right the, the last alliance of elves and men the one where elendil dies and Isildur picks up the sword and cuts the ring off what we get in the main trilogy hmm. um yeah but like you said like we were saying it's so scattered that when it gets to that point i feel like it's literally just gonna be like a oh oh it's here everyone's here like what, what? cool like, 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 like let's go you know like like that kind of thing it's not gonna feel justified or like no like there's gonna be no connection between characters or like pull between characters to like right not and like feel that the, hold them the way that. at least galadriel's character is going it's like she's making enemies with everybody like she's yeah. not even giving him a chance to speak because the guy tries to talk to her and she's like what if i cut it from your throat or whatever the fuck she says you know <laughs> yeah. like okay badass chill you know yeah. like, well she's man... got the island city on her side by the end of the fourth episode they're all rallied to yeah. her yeah of course boss. they did kind of she gets yeah. it done man yeah everything goes in her favor how well, does she escape jail so easily how does she take on 69 men at once and toss them in the jail without breaking a fucking sweat convenience yeah Let's it, it, it feels that done. way I, I was like the way they set up in the two episodes too i was like almost wholly convinced that like galadriel's uh motivation was like personal you know towards like sauron and after her yeah. brother you know died or whatever that it's like oh she's just like got a vendetta against this dude because people she loved died and like she's yeah. going up. Yeah. which i almost like more because she's so driven in this that like when it doesn't when they win but they don't really win because the ring's still alive when it like when they win and then like in the main trilogy frodo shows up and instead of galadriel like taking the ring it would be so much more like you can use the writing in this series to like make a decision like that so much more impactful because it's like oh we, like she didn't take the ring when it was like something that maybe the galadriel we see now would have done because like she could well, take the don't you her think that that would maybe they're leading that you know like yeah that's what i mean it, it doesn't i don't know it doesn't you gotta feel like start that. your maybe character in a there, shitty but... place like your character can't be fully realized yeah, but or there else seems there's to be no, no hope. story I, I, there's, I mean, there's to me like Galadriel's character is obviously hard to listen to because she's so stubborn and like hard headed, but she's like the embodiment of like nature, and to me this whole like Lord of the Rings series is like the the people are so interconnected with nature and the nature is so interconnected with the story, like with, with like the white petals falling. That's why they rallied to her cause is because like that's something that never happens in the world, and they that's like the take time. the meaning from that and like transition it into like their next move of what what they need to do to help this realm be balanced to the good or whatever so like she is the person the only person in this story that is like charging that ahead and i you have to like realize that that's her her purpose in the story too is to like eventually get to that that point probably to have the power to like end sauron or whatever and take the ring or whatever and then not take it you know like Mm -hmm. so i don't know yeah i get that i get like i I think that's like good like obviously that's like what has to happen like um like there's no way I, the way the state that Numenor is in like it has someone has to bring bridge that gap of like I don't know believing the elves again you know like All right like kind of bringing back what was, once was like the greatness mm-hmm. of Numenor and, and Middle Earth and everything so I just wish like I said I wish they like we got introduced to Elendio and Isildur mm-hmm. earlier because then it's like well then you have someone who First of all, if we see them in the ocean, and then Galadriel in the, in the first two episode goes out in the ocean, it's like, oh, like you know, what's gonna you know what's gonna happen? They're in the ocean, you know, stranded in the ocean, and we saw this uh, seaport city. So, and these guys that we kind of like, while the rest of people are hating on elves and skeptical of elves and stuff, and it's just like, like why with a name like a seal door and like what we know his history in the main trilogy, I don't see why you wouldn't like, I don't know, just bolster his storyline more. You know, yeah, I I'd, I'd put more out to him. I would say as a character, that, I mean that's a good point because like he he is the one at the end of the story that will pick selfishly, Massive. right? Uh, and I mean you gotta you gotta thread that. Maybe they will, but 
You yeah. said it's like so only supposed to be two seasons, right? Is that the plan? Two. I think seasons? that's what they're planning for yeah. right now. Right now. I mean, yeah. it's only eight episodes, so that's they do have a lot of work to do. I would say to even make this like serviceable as a full realized story. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, did you like the Aaron Deer storyline? Did you guys talk about that? Is that the South story you're talking that's, about? Or? That's the elf and the human. The, yeah, the Southland storyline. Yeah, I actually yeah. think that's more of like the interesting parts for me. Like, I, I this yeah. what's fun to me. I mean, and probably not fun for people, but like, no, I mean, it's, shit it's lands good. differently. And like yeah. to me, this show is very hit or miss. Obviously, in most of mm-hmm. its moments, but like when it hits, it hits okay. And like. Aaron Deer is one of the people I don't know the story for, kind of, and that's something that interests me. Um, like him in the camp, like the cutting down the tree scene. Sure, it's like heavy handed mm-hmm. or whatever, but like to, to me, I always go back to the nature line. I'm like clearly, that's some metaphor for fucking the they're destroying the fucking wasteland yeah. around. You know, I'm like yep. so like that's the last fucking hold the tree holding out. Like clearly, and he's like the guy who takes it down. Mm-hmm. Like they do the work enough for me to be like. So it's, yeah probably, so i'd never i'm like, like what the fuck dude like <laughs> i don't know yeah. that's just me though i i was like what the fuck dude no i know i'm sure a lot of people yeah. are i just i was you know throwing tables throwing chairs yeah that's why you punch the neighbors the, the way that story like <laughs> moves sequ- sequentially the most like okay for me yeah it's like you're getting it's like continuous and you're kind of i thought the uh easier to follow like but. him being chased like the orc and the kid, him eventually saving the kid storyline with the sword. I, that was cool. Yeah. Him and like jumping in the well, the water coming down. That shot was cool. Like yep. it's, a lot of it's well filmed, I'd say, especially when they're outside. Cause, yeah, like, the slow mo in that forest reminded me a lot of like the uh, when the orcs are all charging down the hill after the fellowship kind of mm. breaks, you know, and around the river and everyone's Frodo and Sam kind of yeah. remind me a little bit of that. So I was like, cool to see. I'd say that uh, whenever they're inside, though, it feels kind of like theatrical. And maybe that's like the disconnect for some people is like even the dialogue kind of feels like you're watching a theater play sometimes where it's like proclamation, you know, and like they're moving across like this open, vast set where it's like they're not really they're not really inhabiting it. They're just kind of like exploring the space. You know what I'm saying? It's like how much did they cut out for their budget for the costumes even like they just don't look good either. Like what? The, the the boat people. What they are? Their armor the is completely yeah. ridiculous. Man. Oh really? I actually really like their. I've the never. I've never had an issue with the set. Armor really? Yeah. yeah. Set or costume. No. I've never really had an issue with any of those. They just look yeah. so. They haven't bothered me a whole lot. Chintzy. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. Eh, yeah. Eh, yeah. Um. Yeah. And to me, the, like the, the rest of it looks good. Like uh, I think, from the last, uh, the first two episodes. The, the only highlight I'll give it is uh, the door area looks fucking sweet, but City's other than that, I just, I don't sick. know. I got, I got nothing. Yeah. I was really, I mean, I, and the orcs look great, too. I mean, I'll give it to them. I'll give it to that. It's like, I mean, the orcs looked good in the main trilogy, so I'm glad that, like, they were, you know, they, they did pushed. The work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they did yeah. The practical, at least. So. Yeah. yeah. So, I was a little disappointed with the warg design. I don't know why. Maybe it was something in the eyes or something, but. I think they're, like, really shooting it at, like, a higher frame rate. Or something it feels for like the, too, the CGI for that mo- the creature like. movement feels way mm-hmm. too fast or like yeah too something many frames or something that yeah, was a little jarring there for me I think but because mm-hmm. yeah. it was like the old wargs were kind of like these hairy arched weird things you know yeah. that one was like very mangy dog looking <laughs> to me <laughs> so yeah I, I don't know like I want yeah I want to love it a lot more it's yeah. just it's hard hard knowing like the some of the background and stuff and yeah it does but i am excited i'm excited to see like the next couple episodes where because alendu was like who uh again i don't want to spoil too much of the lore and stuff but alendu was like and sildar like who found gondor and andor which are like the two main right, right. human cities in middle earth so i'm excited to see like that transition happen it's probably i would assume maybe at the end of like the back half of the season yeah. be part of that and- I know I didn't watch these two episodes, but I promise for the the end of the season wrap up, I will watch them all. I just yeah, uh, no, I, I needed to. You. I will. I <laughs> promise. Yeah, yeah. I have. You have my word. All I'll right. watch them. Right. Uh, I'll I'll do it for this. But I I stopped it because I knew I had to watch First Blood, and I would much rather rewatch that for the seventieth time than watch this any longer. I honestly, when I checked the time, I thought it was almost over to thirty minutes. I yeah. don't know. Long episodes. Just, hour each. Dragon, like, 
yeah. it's like uh yeah yeah I didn't it doesn't like it. doesn't really entice me to watch it like i'm never like mm-hmm. wanting to like it doesn't call me back a lot but when i'm watching it I'm not hating it yeah that's yeah, yeah same same i mean like it does yeah it doesn't like i'm not like looking forward to it as the next like game of thrones every sunday you know yeah it's like it's like oh the next you know the next ring of power it's like yeah i'll throw it on and what, what day of the week does it even come out does it's it... like fridays now or something is it fridays like okay. yeah. Um, I will say the intro kind of growing on me too. Yeah, know, like at first I was like, yeah, eh, a little yeah. lackluster, but now it's just like very, it's very pleasing to watch. The music is I, actually the that's like the I mean, there's no obviously the music hasn't impressed me in the actual show, but that intro music and that's that good. sequence is very pleasing, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, it, it, enjoyed that. Well, I haven't, I haven't seen the intro at all, so it's good. It's satisfying. It's like uh, have you seen those videos of like where. They put sand on like speakers and like the vibrations make yeah. like weird. Yeah. It like reminds me of that. It's just too much extra time spent, you know, watching the show for me. So. <laughs> All right. Time's an investment. I get it, man. It's, <laughs> it's valuable. I'll, yeah. I'll invest in a good show, but, you know, I'm just trying to power through at this point. Fair enough. Yeah. And I we'll promise see if... you have my word. I'll watch them. All right. I mean, yeah, we don't have to keep doing the two by two episodes if you, if you want to do like the back half of it. I just wanted to talk about this because I felt a definite shift in like what I thought about the writing and, and that kind of thing. Good. So, That's good. Yeah. 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 We'll, we'll convert you, Matt. Eh, we'll see. <laughs> Slowly but surely. Right. Yeah. Now. I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying it's Stop like, Stop enjoying it. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Don't enjoy yourself. Yeah. I am a tempest. Yeah. I will not be quelled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> now, like I said, there's, there's stuff I still really like about it. I'll go back. I'll keep watching it. So. All right. Well, stick oh, with us, there's guys. Nothing I really like about it, but the C is always right. Whatever the fuck that C means. C is always right. Yeah. Take a In the meantime, take a